So when I moved to Edmonton, I had a great time exploring my new city, but after about two years, I started to feel a little bit stuck. So I gave myself a challenge, which would get me out of my routine. As a designer, I know that constraints and restrictions can actually create the environment for better problem solving. A good example of uh, embracing a restriction is a famous concert pianist who was asked to play at an auditorium with terrible acoustics and sticky piano keys. He was forced to improvise, which meant using mainly the higher register and using greater pressure so that he could be heard at the back of the auditorium. The result was a beautiful and unique piece, which pushed his genre forward. When I was considering my challenge, I thought perhaps the most interesting constraint that I could try to tackle would be to spend nothing for one month. So I called this challenge, Spend Nothing, Do Everything, which I learned was uh, maybe a bit too optimistic, but uh, still a lot of fun. I decided that I would spend the same amount I'd already contributed or put aside for rent, groceries, and the internet, but nothing else. I could have easily called this project Spend Nothing, Watch All of YouTube. So I needed a few more guidelines. These were don't watch all of the internet, don't be a mooch, be more generous, meet new people, and see more of Edmonton. So I suspected that this project would force me to get out of my comfort zone of restaurants and movie theaters and uh, make me start participating in a different way in my new city. Um, I started speaking to as many people as I could about what do they do in town for free fun. And a few personas started to emerge from all that information. The first are the geeks. <laughs> geeks are really active in Edmonton. My favorite find is a Facebook group called Lady Geeks Unite. And they host clothing swaps and board game nights and guest speakers. And best of all, they have a book club uh, where they only read comic books written by female authors. Uh, so I also found if I was interested in learning how to fight with lightsabers, I could go to Winston Churchill Square. Uh, another thing I did with geeks is I joined a writer's circle for sci-fi nerds. So that was fun. In Edmonton, jocks are more than just Oilers fans. I know we have a couple November Project folks here. Uh, the November Project we heard last time they're a group of people who organize uh, free exercises around the town and uh, believe that exercise should be accessible to everybody, should be outside, and should involve community. So this is great. All you have to do is show up at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Sunday sessions in Horlock Park are hosted by a very generous yoga instructor and his DJ buddy, and uh, they're a beautiful time in, in the park on Sundays. Um, they're described as a brownie, so like a treat, but like a really good for you treat, like a gluten-free brownie. So <laughs> I encourage you to go to that as well. The other group that I found were the outdoor explorers. And these people are busy organizing hikes in the River Valley and bringing people out to Elk Island to stargaze. There's a great newsletter you can sign up for which uh, lets you know when the aurora borealis is going to be particularly beautiful. There's also uh, maps that the city of Edmonton has created of all the different neighborhoods and the walking paths you can take. Uh, and it even marks out uh, the best picnic spots and lookout points. I would suggest trying geocaching, although I, I wasn't good at it. Um, the, last, the last group that I came across are the culture buffs. And so culture buffs, you might find them in the art gallery on the uh, monthly community nights. There's also Creative Mornings, which is a breakfast and lecture series um, for creative types in the city. There's also a very active uh, French language and culture group, which organizes on meetup.com. So what I learned from doing this challenge is that it wasn't necessary for me to wait for uh, perfect conditions in order for me to start doing the things I wanted to do. Each of these personas I found, that's the culture buff, each of these personas uh, represent just one feature of Edmonton's unique character. Uh, and if I had just been doing my regular 
routine, I would have missed out on this very quirky and adorable side of the city that I was getting to know better. I learned that people in Edmonton are starters, they're active, and they're incredibly inviting. And I hope that even just a little bit might rub off on me while I'm here. I also learned that uh, my spending had apparently been uh, propping up a number of bad habits I had. So instead of being late, I would hop in a cab to hide my chronic lateness. I would buy lunch instead of being prepared for the day. I would sink costs and feel guilty into uh, exercise classes. So when I was spending nothing, I had to do the actual work of behavior change, um, which was difficult. But so on the one hand, while I was having this benefit of saving money, I had this secondary benefit of getting rid of these bad habits and, and actually committing and following through to things that were important to me. So it's like the saying, when you chop your own wood, it, it warms you twice. There is a scary reality, which is that we're all operating under a constraint, which is finite time. So it's, um, it's no surprise that the message that anything is possible and there are no limits, uh, we all would like to believe that it's quite seductive. But novelist Wendell Berry suggests we suffer from a disease of perceived limitlessness. And the people who ignore the reality of our limits, who think that there will always be time later on, rarely make the best of things. So I encourage you, please uh, make the most of your circumstances, embrace a constraint, and invite someone out to do some free fun in the city. And I'd also like to thank uh, Jason Blowers for sharing his beautiful illustrations.